Hi, I'm Maddie, and welcome to Earth Unplugged. Today, I'm joined by Brit Labs' Greg Foote. Hi, I'm Greg. Is that what I do? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and today, we're going to talk about some of the ways global warming is affecting animals around the world and how this could have a knock-on effect on us. Yeah, so Earth Unplugged and Brit Lab have joined forces to make a couple of different films, mm -hmm. taking a sideways look at climate change. And if you've subscribed to Brit Lab already... And if you haven't, why not? Yes, what she said. Then you may well have seen a video from me and and Maddie giving you basically our top, our favourite bizarre ways that <laughs> science and technology could help tackle climate change. Yeah, but over here on Earth Unplugged, we're all about the animals. So, Greg, as you're new, mm -hmm. can I challenge you to give us a quick explanation of global warming? No pressure. Okay, so down here on Earth, we're basking in the sun's radiation. Yes. Right? It travels 150 million kilometres to reach us, or 93 million miles for any Imperial fans, and then it falls into our atmosphere. Now, some of it is reflected by fluffy big white clouds mm -hmm. or snow fields, that sort of thing. But most of it is absorbed by the Earth's surface. And that warms the planet up. And then a nice warm Earth re-emits lots of that energy back out again to help it cool down. And that yeah. goes back up into space. Okay. But some of it gets trapped, it gets absorbed by carbon dioxide, by methane, the greenhouse gases, and that means that the planet warms up. That's known as the greenhouse effect. The thing is, <gasps> the greenhouse effect is not actually a bad thing. Mm. We need it to heat up the planet to make the planet habitable for life. Is that right? Yeah? Yeah, that. Without it, then the Earth would essentially be just like Mars. What we're talking about is global warming. Mm. And the, all the evidence points towards the fact that the increased temperature is actually coming from our activity, from human activity. That's what global warming is. A relatively big jump in temperature over a relatively short period of time caused by human activity. The thing is, a lot of, a lot of animals, humans, including myself, like things to be a little bit toasty. So how is this extra heat affecting the natural kingdom? in negative ways? Well, first up, it causes ice to melt. Mm -hmm. And Greenland actually lost 152 cubic kilometres of ice, which is so, so much, just yes. between 2002 and 2006. And this is why polar bears have become a bit of a poster animal for conservationists. They use sea ice to travel from area to area. When this sea ice takes longer to reform or just disappears entirely, it means they struggle to get back to their preferred hunting grounds at certain times of the year. However, the polar bears aren't the only ones having the hard time. That melting ice causes sea levels to rise thousands of kilometres away from the poles. Take the Bengal tigers, for example. In India, they live in the mangrove swamps. There are now less than 500 yeah. of them in the wild. Which is so sad. And usually, cats are not exactly the biggest fans of water, but these incredible beasts are so good at swimming. However, they're still being threatened by the rising sea levels because the rising waters are making the land that they hunt and reproduce in smaller and smaller. And what's becoming a further problem is that local people are wary of the tigers, which are known to kill humans and farm animals in the area. So what's happening is hunts are being organised in retaliation. So tiger response teams are actually being set up in some areas to scare and intimidate the animals further away simply to save their lives. Some animals, though, thrive with that extra water and extra heat. The pesky mosquito, for example. <laughs> yeah. With extra water, it can breed larger populations. And with extra heat, it can stay active for longer. Now, there's actually research that does suggest that those insects could actually breed more effectively in Europe Ooh. and indeed in the UK, yeah. which of course comes with a potential extra risk and incidence of diseases like malaria. And there are even more bizarre ways that temperature increases can affect animals. It can even determine their sex. The temperature of the sand that sea turtles lay their eggs in has been shown to influence the gender of the offspring and hotter temperatures by just a few degrees will produce almost entirely female populations. And this is because some reptiles don't have sex chromosomes, the XX or the XY, that we have. So instead, gender is decided at a crucial stage of embryonic development by temperature. And for some reptile breeders, this is really useful. I actually got to go to Crocodiles of the World last year to help them hatch a batch of female alligators. So, with that temperature increase, we mm. could end up with lots of female turtles, yeah. right? Which is probably not a bad thing because that would be loads and loads of eggs for the next generation. Yeah, but the thing is, when you have a sudden surge um, in populations, this can actually upset food.
food chains and then also wreak havoc on other animals and other ecosystems. And in nature, it has a really like, delicate balancing act that it needs to perform. And then once these numbers are thrown out of whack, it can take years to put right again. Do you know of any other odd ways climate change is affecting animals and their habitats? If you do, let us know in the comments below. Yep, and click here if you haven't yet seen the film that Maddie and I did for BritLab, showing you some of the ingenious, but we've got to say it's slightly bizarre <laughs> ways that science and tech is trying to rewrite those temperature increases through global warming. And then click here if you want to see me hatch some really cute alligator babies. <laughs> well, I know which one you're going to click on. This one. Yeah, don't forget but watch to, this one too, it's awesome. Don't forget to subscribe to both BritLab and Earth Unplugged and we'll see you next time for more science and nature content. Bye! See ya!